Well, I'm now joined on the line by Nicolas Villain, who is Director General of a foundation here in France that combats Alzheimer's. It's called Vaincre Alzheimer. I think you are joining us from uh, San Francisco, where there's an important annual Alzheimer Congress uh, currently underway. Thank you for your time. First of all, can you uh, tell us uh, this Le Canemab drug, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, what is it going to change for sufferers and, and their carers? Well, uh, first of all, that's the first drug for which we uh, finally have a clean data set and clean results that tell us, yes, the drug works. Um, so that's a very positive thing because, as you know, in Alzheimer's disease, we don't have a lot of drugs that slow down the disease. And uh, for the first time, we have uh, clear results that show that we have a drug that can slow down the disease. So that's really uh, very good news for patients, very good news for caregivers, very good news for us, medical doctors who, who take care of them, of course, as well. So that's very good news for the field. Though, we, we, yeah. No, carry on. No, no, no. I mean, though, it's not the perfect drug so far, of course. It's a, it's a first step into uh, into something bigger, we hope. Um, because, yeah, it's, it's efficient, uh, it's effective, uh, but it's so far not really uh, meaningful, this uh, efficacy. It was measured after 18 months and the difference was uh, uh, significant from a, a methodological point of view, so uh, no problem regarding this, but the difference remain, remains tiny and modest. So we don't have, you know, to, to, to jump uh, uh, and to say, hey, we, we have cured Alzheimer's. So it's a first step. We have a first drug that may slow Alzheimer, and uh, that's a uh, very big news. But it doesn't stop Alzheimer, and we, we still have uh, more to do. Yeah. Still a lot of work to be done. When might yeah. it be available even to slow uh, those who are in the early stages? Well, it depends on which country you're talking about. <laughs> France, Europe. Uh, France, Europe, um, <laughs> because the US will have an early uh, approval uh, and, uh, at the beginning of 2023. I think the Europe file should be deposited next year, early next year, and then you have a one-year assessment of the file, so it will be 2024. And uh, in some countries in Europe, like in France, you have uh, some early um, access to market uh, possibilities that can be before the Europe approval. So in France, at best, it can be at the end of the next year as an early market process. And then uh, uh, standard approval will take more years and uh, coverage reimbursement by uh, national uh, health systems will take, again, a little bit of more time. But we can have some kind of early access next year or in the next two years. And what about countries around the world with very little money to spend on health? When might it be available to wow, those that, sort of markets? And that's a critical question. I absolutely have no answer to give to that question. I hope I, I could, but you should really ask the, the company who uh, uh, who's the development, economical development, uh, uh, if their economical development will take into account this kind of country. I, I'm not aware of that uh, for the moment because the drug is expected to be expensive because it's a, a monoclonal antibody, which means a biological engineering. So even um, if you don't make money with that, it costs a lot to produce. Um, so, and it's a, a bi-monthly uh, infusion, so which means that every two weeks the patient has to come to an hospital, get an infusion, and then go back home. So, and you need to have also MRIs uh, every two or three months during the first year of the treatment. So, you know, you need to have a, a healthcare system that can handle uh, frequent infusions and MRI monitoring. So it's a bit tricky. How much do we know about what causes Alzheimer's now? There's been a lot of research. Yeah, well, we know quite well that uh, your uh, Genetic background accounts for about 60% uh, of your risk, and about the environment, 
environmental uh, stresses can account for up to 40%. But it's a multifactorial disease, which means that you have several genes which individually don't have a lot of risk. But if you combine them and you combine them to several environmental uh, triggers, then you can increase your risk. But you don't have one cause, one disease. You know, it's not that simple. OK, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate you giving us your time. Nicolas Villain there speaking to us.